Good morning, everyone. Happy almost Halloween. I guess it's Halloween Eve right now. It's Janet Wakeland with Remarkably Created, and I'm kicking off a day of crafting tricks whereby you have the chance to win Hollow uh, Stampin' Up treats. I've got all kinds of fun treats um, that I will be giving away, actually. Um, 14 lucky people, one for each one of the posts, starting with this one right now. And all you need to do is comment. So for those of you that are catching this first video of the day live, go ahead and say hi and give your favorite Halloween candy a shout out. I personally am a big fan of things like Skittles, Sour Patch Kids, Gummy Bears, um, things like that. Of course, though, I am a little bit of a snob, so I do like the traditional original no-off brands of them. It has to be Haribo Gummies or they're not gummies. So, but again, give yourself a shout out and your favorite Halloween um, candy. So what's gonna happen is in this video, I have 20 really fun crafting tricks for you. And then every, every hour starting at 9.30, there will be a post where you are gonna be asked to share your tricks around a specific thing related to crafting. And it's fun when we can collaborate and we can share all of those ideas and see how other people do things. So make sure that you pop in. You'll have all day today and all day tomorrow to go ahead and leave a comment on all of those, share your personal tricks related to those posts. I'll pop back on at nine o'clock tonight with another great um, trick for you related to crafting. And then on November 1st in the evening, I will announce the winners. So let's go ahead and let's flip this camera around and let's jump right into the tricks. I have a whole tray here of amazing things to share with you. So I'm gonna move it off to the side and we're gonna just start first, we'll work from the top down, they're in no particular order. And I do have a cheat sheet over here to the side so if you see my hand or me marking things off, it's because I don't wanna forget any one of the 21 ideas. And they're in no order of importance as far as the tricks, they're just things that sometimes we do things without thinking about them because we've done them for so long and we don't always think to share them or think that, oh, everybody knows that, right? So my trick for staying organized in my studio is my P-Touch labeler. I can't live without it. I love how easy it is to use. I love that you can get assorted types of laminates in it and I pretty much label everything. Drawers, I've got clear stamp cases that I love to add labels to. So labeling things definitely helps you find things and remember where you put them. So I'm a big fan of labeling. Another thing for me that's a trick is I love tools that are multi-purpose. So for example, instead of trying to always hunt down my ruler, I can use this for measuring. I can simply, you know, grab a piece of cardstock and I can see, oh, that's, that's, you know, five and a half inches long. I can use this to cut. I can use this to score. So I'm a really, really big fan of multi-purpose tools, things that I can get more than one use out of. With multi-purpose tools, it decreases the need to own lots of tools, if that makes sense. And another crafting trick is less is more. Um, a lot of times as crafters, we need the latest gadget, the latest gizmo. We need all the paper, all the colors, all the markers, right? And that's great. That's all fine if you have a place for it, if you can find it, if you can use it. So another trick for me is to constantly be reevaluating, you know, ask myself, when's the last time I did that? You know, my recommendation, my trick is at least every six months to a year, kind of do a deep dive, a deep clean in your craft studio. There's great products there that you haven't touched in years that might benefit a local daycare, a local school, um, a local um, like senior center that does crafting and things like that. There's also money in those extras um, in your neighborhood yard sales, um, Facebook sales groups, and things like that. So that's another trick for you as well. Multi-purpose tools. And then the other trick is to do a deep dive in your studio at least once a year. And that's my new philosophy because I didn't used to do it. I did a deep dive when we moved a little over a year ago. Um, 26 years of crafting in the same place. And let me tell you... Um, Forget spring cleaning, cleaning your house, I will always be doing my studio. So then another trick is with Stampin' Up, 
Let me grab a stamp here for just a second and a block. One of the things about Stampin' Up! is our cardstock is dyed the whole way through, okay? So, you know, you're gonna put a stamp down and sometimes it's not gonna be exactly where you want it. It's not gonna, um, you know, maybe catch the whole image because you didn't ink it, you know, well enough, didn't put pressure on it. Lots of reasons why we have those boo-boos, right? Well, Stampin' Up! cardstock is magically double-sided. I see a lot of people stamp on one side and throw it out. And a lot of times that's because you've worked with cardstock before that is color on one side and it might be a neutral or a white on the other side, or it may be really thin cardstock that you can see through. The only exception to maybe stamping on both sides if you make a mistake is if you're using a really dark ink on our basic white um, or our very vanilla. Sometimes the darker inks then may show through to the other side, but I love having double-sided paper. That is absolutely a nice benefit. So then another tip that you don't need to worry about with Stampin' Up! or trick with Stampin' Up! Um, is that it's always recommended that you store your ink pads upside down. And I always stored my ink pads upside down before we went to this new version. And these Stampin' Up! pads were designed exactly for that purpose. If you see when I go to open it, I am flipping the pad, which is upside down, up so that I can work on it. So for those of you that don't have Stampin' Up! pads, you wanna make sure that you store them upside down. That helps keep the ink up on the surface of it. And you'll find that your pads will feel fresher um, and inked longer um, when you store them upside down. So that's a, a great benefit for you. So let me grab some dimensionals here and give you a few tricks related to dimensionals. So I'm just gonna put a little row of adhesive here. It's something that I usually do when I know I'm gonna be working with quite a few dimensionals. So let's just put a dimensional on here. And the reason why is dimensional backs end up everywhere if you don't contain them. So again, I usually up in the corner of my workspace just put a little strip of um, seal, some of you are still using snail or another type of tape runner or something, just to catch those dimensional backs. So then the other thing about dimensionals is that sometimes you want extra height and you can absolutely layer those pieces. Also, there's gonna be times where you're layering and you've got that end that flops just a little bit and so you're gonna want to go ahead and maybe have different heights depending on how you're layering them up. So again, layering your dimensionals is a great trick to remember when you've got odd edges and you wanna actually stack some of the different heights. You can achieve kind of a multi-layered look by stacking those dimensionals. And while we have the dimensionals out, let me see if I can grab this other little piece here real quick that I have, is you always wanna make sure that you hold on to these little edges. I used to throw them away and boy, did I get schooled. People reminded me very quickly that there's lots of great uses for these. You'll have long border dies, and so that'll be a great use for them on long border dies for doing shaker cards and things like that. So you always want to hold on to um, those extra edges and have those handy because you can definitely use them. And I hoard those now too, <laughs> whereby I used to throw them away. Think of that waste. You can also take your scissors and you can cut in, and there's still a lot of traditional size dimensionals left around that edge as well. Then you've got glue dots, you've got dimensionals, and this piece of paper here is shiny. It's what's known as a release paper. It's designed so that something sticky releases from it, okay? Kind of like how labels and things like that work. So I saved those as well. And a couple of different reasons for that, let's set that aside, we have another tip coming with that again in just a second, is that when I work with liquid glue, I find that yes, I can definitely, you know, kind of go around and make an edge that way. But sometimes if I'm working with something very, very intricate, that's real small, I will squeeze out my Tombow and I will use my dauber. I keep one around just for this. And I can then go ahead and do that outline, that really intricate piece of the die by saving these. So this little piece here can be recycled and repurposed um, along with just keeping an old dauber. You could even use that P2Touch labeler to write glue on that and you'll know that that's your glue. 
You'll notice that the Tombow came out of a jar. There's definitely um, fancy holders out there. A lot of people are um, using those um, special printers, the 3D printers to make fun holders. You got a baby food jar, you got an empty jar. Just storing your adhesives upside down, again, keeps that glue up at the top. Will help it flow more freely when you are trying to work with it. Um, and just kind of get more use out of it by storing it upside down. So let's keep moving here. And I thought I had a Christmas tree with me, but who knows where it went, right? Every time I told you, I had this big old thing full of stuff. Okay, so back to our dimensionals for just a second, and I'm just gonna use this cardstock. Let's pretend it's a black Christmas tree that I thought I had here. Is that sometimes I know that we sell black dimensionals, but maybe you want your dimensional to be blue. Maybe you want it to be, you know, Merlot like this cardstock was. You can color the edges of it with a Stampin' Marker, Stampin' Blends. Um, sometimes because of the way that you're layering, you don't want to have that little bit of white showing. So you can take a marker and color the edges of it. And again, like I said, we do have small black dimensionals. But white, for me, is much more versatile. I get more money out of it because then again, I can use markers and I can make it any one of the colors that I want, coloring those edges right there. So that's another tip for you. Then another tip is in working with dyes. So dyes a lot of times want to shift on your die cutting plate. And a couple of different ways that you can avoid that, you can use a post-it note, or many of you probably have washi that you know was a hot trend and now it's just sitting in a drawer all lonely. Pull it back out. I actually keep mine in a bowl right at my die cutting machine, and then you can hold it down. But in addition to holding it down for die cutting, one of the things that I showed in a video from my customers yesterday was using your dies as stencils, and so you could use this same tip to hold whether it's a die down, holding a stencil down so it's more flat across the paper so that what it is that you're spritzing or putting across it has less chance of steeping under it. So post-it notes are amazingly useful as is washi tape. But just a little sneak peek because we'll do a whole nother video on it. But isn't that beautiful? This was bleached. That's how I got that look. So that was a fun tip for, for yesterday. I'll set that up there. Another tip yet is with cards, and this was always one that makes me smile. The inside of this one's not finished yet, but you'll still get the idea. Is that a lot of times you'll have a card that has a little bit of bulk to it, and you don't want it messed up when you mail it. So you can either lay, you know, something on top of it, like a small little piece of cardboard that you've cut from that extra designer paper cardboard, or the fun thing that I've seen and I actually really like is just turning them inside out. And I know you're like, well, they'll see the inside first. Well, that's okay. You know, the real fun for me is, I mean, yes, the personalized message is a very, very nice touch, but this is kind of then like that surprise. So they'll see your message, and then when they fold it the right way, they'll see that beautiful front. So I always love it when I get cards um, in the mail that have actually been turned inside out because it also then saves from adding that extra bulk, that extra weight of a piece of foam you know, a piece of cardboard or something like that. So I think that this is actually a very smart trick and something fun to do. So then some of you are probably going, I know what this is all about. I don't know about you, but I find that I have a lot of things that really should be in the kitchen in my studio. <laughs> it's like, okay, so I don't cook. So maybe that's why so many household things end up in the studio. But over time, some of you may have punches that you use forever for example one that was like used to like dullness in my studio was a two inch circle punch and so um every now and then you may find again that it's just not cutting as crispy as you like and so then just use some aluminum foil and just punch it a few times and that will kind of help to resharpen the edges and things like that so of course you want to be careful because you're going to have to dig some of that out you could also go ahead and line this onto a piece of cardstock so that it's a little stiffer. I just get all those little extra pieces out. But aluminum foil can be really good for sharpening those punches. 
Another tip that some of you have seen me use, and I was up early crafting this morning, so I've already dirtied stamps in the studio. But when I'm working, for example, I know I'm working with a specific stamp set, and I'm going to be reusing those stamps over and over again, and literally I'm being lazy and don't want to run to the sink or don't want to um, pull my chamois out. And some of you I know craft yourselves into a tiny little space. Having a, this large clear block handy, I just put the dirty stamps on them and then, you know, after two or three cards, I'll go take this and I'll wash them off um, and get them all nice and clean and then pat them dry. Plus it keeps me from losing them in between time and it allows me to get extra mileage out of this clear block instead of using it just for large background stamps. So. You'll see when you come to my studio, when you get to come stamp with me, one of these sits at every one of my customer crafting stations where they get to sit um, in classes. And then I have one at my workstation. And again, this was this morning's work efforts. Speaking of clear blocks, let's take a look at this one here for just a second. And a couple of things, again, your clear block can double as so many things. You can use your clear block as a pickup so because it's you know non-porous things aren't going to fade into it or stain it and so you can put your inks on there you can put your pearlized enamel on there if you're working with that in water you know you can just go ahead and just use this as your paint palette and you can go ahead and start to color which is a lot of fun in addition your clear block can also double as a stamp you can grab it and put a little bit of ink on it and you can create some really fun backgrounds with it, either the way I just did it, or you can simply just stamp with it. You can go ahead and take your ink pad and just fill it with ink. And it's gonna give you some fun backgrounds doing something like this. And you can see the difference between the watercolor and the direct to ink. So you can see again, those multi-purpose tools, those multi-purpose things, in your studio are going to go a long way and then you're just going to go ahead and give it a nice wash and it'll be all clean but you can get a lot of use out of your clear blocks as well another thing in my studio that is a trick is i have this little magnetic bowl i keep this magnetic bowl beside my die cutting machine and little pieces now these are actually ones that need to find a home <laughs> because we do, even with the magnetic bowl, sometimes something will stick to cardstock. You thought you pulled it over. I keep all of my cardstock um, that I've die cut beside it um, until I check the back sides of all of them. But also as I'm working with really small ones, I'll put them in here and try to remember to take them off the paper and put them in here so I can put them back um, at the end of cutting because you know sometimes we're doing more than one two or three so I love having a magnetic bowl here in the United States Harbor Freight I think has the best deal going on magnetic bowls and they have lots and lots of different sizes this one actually came out of my mom's crafting room so it's a little piece of my mom here when I am crafting yet another tip for you involves boo-boo's mistakes we've all had them those smudges those you know crazies that happen invariably you go to close an ink pad you end up with a little bit of ink you touch the card and there it is right we've all done that and so my customers will tell you one of the things is that janet will tell you how to fix anything like just hang on a second i hear him at class and he'll go oh. they'll be like wait a minute janet's got a fix for that and so some of the most simple fixes is to go ahead and you know first off I always wait till the very, very end um, after I've cleaned my hands and everything to add a greeting um, because sometimes it's that last step and you can use the greeting, alter the size of the greeting to cover that smudge. Um, another fun way to kind of cover like maybe something that's a little off, let's take our soft suede. You could use any color that you want depending on it, but this is gold embossed, so I kind of want to tie into that and make sure my tip is clean. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of water down in here. And really, I'm not, it's not so much about the water, I want this good and wet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my finger out and I'm just gonna speckle the background just a little bit. I'm gonna add, in um, crafting terms, the first way I heard this was fly specking. You can use a toothbrush. A toothbrush actually gives you some of the coolest where you take your brush, you get it wet, 
and you just kind of do this. And so you get a much smoother, finer dot with an old toothbrush. So you get to repurpose an old toothbrush, bleach it first, get all the, the teeth germs off of it, or if that still grosses you out, just go buy a brand new one for your studio. But again, sometimes adding that fly specking can cover up some of the smudges and things like that. Plus, it adds a little character to you. Um, so, fly specking, the greeting, and of course, the amazing embellishments, right? How many of you have ever selectively placed a sequin, a rhinestone, or something specifically to hide a spot, right? Definitely something that happens when you're crafting. Another tip for you is with adding greetings. For me, adding greetings seems to be where all of my boo-boos and mistakes happen. I either add it, you know, it gets crooked. Um, for some reason, it doesn't press right. It just seems like that's, like, if I'm going to mess up, that's where I'm going to mess up. And so I always wait, and that's why this one is not finished, because I don't know exactly what it's going to be just yet. And so I use a liner inside of my card, but I don't adhere, adhere it inside of my card till I've stamped the greeting that way, if I do make a mistake, I have that second choice. If I do make a mistake, I can grab another piece of paper, but my whole card isn't ruined. But one other option for you, if you get to that point, is to go ahead and cut this because the top part is fine, right? But you've messed up inside. And then add this to the top of another card. So just don't, don't start all over just because you messed up on the inside. This can be, you know, repurposed to create the same look and everything on another card for you. So moving along with our tips, I still haven't found that tree. This is one that I teach you guys often, but some of you are new followers, so some of you may not have seen this one. And let's pretend like I've scored this already. Scoring definitely is a trick. Scoring will definitely help give you a really, really nice um, fold. And so the other thing is, is to start when you're going to crease your card in the middle and work out to both edges. Have you ever folded your card and then, let's just use this one as an example. You fold it and you start to rub it and now it ends up shifted just a little bit. And it, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, seriously? It's because if you start at one end, you're actually pushing the paper. Okay, if I start here, and push, I'm pushing the paper. So by starting in the middle, I'm pushing the paper equally in both directions and that gives you that nicer lineup, that nicer crease. Okay, we're almost done guys. I think we're getting close to 20. So two other tricks that I use in my studio is I keep a lint roller handy over by my, where I have all of my, my powders for embossing and uh, my die cut machine is right there too. And we know that there are those dies, hello, that have lots and lots of itty bitty pieces, right? And even though I work inside of a tray when I'm cleaning them, they still end up going places. And so a uh, lint roller is really, really good for picking up the um, itty bitty little papers that you can see here, the powders, um, the glitters and things like that. So I love a lint roller. And then something else I actually keep handy. I have this little jug that they all just sit right down inside of. But the other thing for some of the larger pieces on my desktop and stuff like that is I just bought this adorable little um, dustbin. So that's definitely something that I use as well. So let me just do a quick look. I think I gave you more than 20 tips. Just want to make sure. One of my final tips, a little lanyard for you guys. It's a trick that um, really makes a difference in my business. And that's to simply just play without a purpose. You know, taking and bleaching this and going, oh, I wonder what that would look like. And now I have a piece and I've just played. I didn't have a finished card in mind. I wasn't trying to case somebody or duplicate somebody, which is definitely a fun thing to do too. But I think every now and then we need to step back and just play with some of our products. Look around your studio and go, ooh, what would happen if, you know, ooh, I haven't used that for a while. And I don't think we give ourselves enough permission to just play. I know some of that's our time constraints that we have in life. Sometimes we go to our craft space and we're on a mission. We have something that we need to create now. And so I think that if you can find time, you know, once a month, once a quarter to just play, to just say, what would happen if I bleached this? What would this look like? What would happen if I paired this with that? 
and just play around. A lot of you have so much paper and cardstock and ribbon and things um, stick just laying around. What better use than to play with it, right? To, to make some use out of it than just always trying to figure out how to organize it and stuff. So that's our first round of tricks for the day. I realized as I was preparing this video that I literally could do part two and part three. Um, I've been working on that whole next list of things. There's so many little tricks and things that we do in our business. So as I mentioned, starting here at 930, you will see a graphic pop up. 930, 1030, 1130, 1230, 130, 230. You get the idea. And each one of them will be asking you to share a very specific trick. Um, related to the topic at hand. And the more people that share their tricks, the more likely we're all to find something that might work for us and help us maybe with a problem that we're having um, that just drives us nuts in our crafting spaces. So I look forward to seeing you guys back here at 9 p.m. and I can't wait to see all of the tricks that you guys share. And don't forget, 14 of you, based one for every, starting with this video, I have lots of fun treats and that is available to all of my followers regardless of where you live. So thanks guys. Have an amazing day. I'll see you at nine o'clock.